This video is brought to you by Masterworks. Stick around to hear more about the special offer they've provided to the entire upper echelon community. Okay, recession is the word of the day, and recession is the thing we're going to get. In a broader sense, recession is a multifaceted subject that has far-reaching ramifications for almost every single corporate or sovereign body on Earth. It's a fascinating state of affairs to look at how economies function during a recession, and it's probably a subject I'll look into on my own for personal enjoyment. But for today, let's focus on video games, gaming media, and digital entertainment. First things first, we need to look at macroeconomic trends. Actually, it's just one trend, and we've been hearing about it nonstop for two consecutive years. COVID-19 radically impacted global trade, shipping, supply lines, food production, honestly, everything. But for today, we're going to focus on digital entertainment. According to Nielsen, gaming reached impressive all-time highs during COVID. This included digital storefront users, online players for a variety of games, and not just gaming itself, but also Twitch viewership. According to DEG, the digital entertainment group, industry revenue continued to explode in 2021, leapfrogging 2020 by a measure of billions. According to Statista, average time spent per day consuming digital entertainment exploded in 2020, logging the single greatest increase on record period for a calendar year. And I could go on and on describing precisely how large the increase has been and how much revenue these companies begin to actually make, but hopefully this will be enough to illustrate my point. Basically, the COVID pandemic spurred lockdowns. If not flat out isolation, people were at least limiting their normal activities, and there was a dramatic shift towards at-home entertainment solutions. Movie theaters got hit hard, travel companies like airlines and hotels got brutalized, but video game publishers, video game media as well, and streaming options were among a smaller list of companies that reaped enormous benefit. If you combine explosive growth in digital entertainment with a dramatic decrease in alternate spending, what do you get? Short answer, you get progressive all-time highs in a couple of industries that are predicated on unsustainable access to disposable income that has been diverted from other normal expenditures. AKA, it's just not going to last. According to Ampere Analysis, a data-slash-analytics company specializing in the media sector, rather than all-time high explosive year-over-year -year growth, the gaming space, and by extension multiple other subsectors, is poised for a retraction in 2022. Now, if you look at the actual number here and think, whatever, it's only 1% or 2%, it's a really small reduction, you'd be correct. However, the better way to frame this is that $151 billion to $182 billion is a 20% increase annually. That's 2019 to 2020. $182 billion to $191 billion is a 5% increase. That's 2020 to 2021, right, during everything. But a 1% or 2% reduction, well, that's a pretty large reversal off the heels of record explosive growth. All of this talk about recession, and it fits rather well with a company I've personally invested in. I've talked about them before, and I want to make it crystal clear that Masterworks has nothing to do with crypto, NFTs, or blockchain. It is not associated with these concepts. All of their paintings are physically stored, as well as securitized with the SEC. Masterworks is democratizing the ownership of blue-chip artwork, and blue-chip artwork is a market with excellent performance during periods of heavy inflation. Right now, we can see multi-decade record high inflation rates in the United States that might ease, but the fears of recession are only growing. Blue chip artwork is insulated from other existing markets like stocks and bonds. It is less volatile, it can serve as a diversification mechanism, and it has outperformed the S&P 500 for the past 26 years. To date, they have sold four paintings with over a net 25% IRR to their investors. Now, legally, I'll add that past performance obviously isn't a guarantee of future results, but it's no wonder people have invested over $500 million with them. Interesting statistic here, after they sold a painting last week for a 27% net return, they saw signups increase by 682%. That, combined with the fact that they speak to every single investor to make sure that the art is right for them, means there's a wait list. But, good news, if you're interested, the partnership gives us priority access to skip the line. And it's easy as clicking the link down below in the description, masterworks.art slash upper echelon. Again, there's a link down below to skip the waitlist and sign up for Masterworks today. I am not a registered financial advisor. As part of the onboarding process for Masterworks, you will speak with a financial advisor who can discuss options and help thoroughly brief you on the platform, but me, myself, no. However, I do hold a personal stake in one of the many Masterworks paintings. Big thank you to Masterworks for sponsoring the channel. So, having established that we are facing a recession in video games, why does it even matter? Well, for starters, there's something I actually don't see in the Ampere analysis, which may end up becoming a major factor, increasing the severity of this recession. China is not mentioned in the report at all. China is not measured as a macroeconomic factor, but China does matter for this purpose, because China is making dramatic changes to their video game regulation laws. 
While a total freeze on new titles being released has recently been lifted, as of January 2022, 14,000 Chinese video game companies have been put out of business, and the Chinese government is launching repeated and deliberate attacks on the market for mobile games, restricting child access, restricting monetization, even referring to video games themselves as spiritual opium, which holds very strong negative connotations from a cultural perspective. China is effectively and deliberately strangling its own video game market, which is a revenue source for Western companies. And when we realize that China itself is the number one market on earth for video games, mostly as a result of population size, we can see that severe restrictions by an oppressive government can and will have an effect on recession. To go even further, Western game developers pulling out of Russia, which was, at the time of the Ukraine invasion at least, the 10th largest video game economy in the world, is cited directly as a macroeconomic factor impacting the looming recession by Ampere. If that's the case, China is positioned to have a far greater effect, and the combined result is that international business for gaming companies could become far less lucrative. It's important to understand that while I myself live in the United States and a large portion of video game design is catered directly to me and those around me, gaming publishers and gaming news syndicates are global. Severe restrictions on multiple of their target markets internationally, including the number 10 and number 1 examples, can have a dramatic impact on their overall revenue. However, global economic factors impacting digital entertainment don't stop there. The way we need to examine this is that for most people, time equals money, and money equals entertainment. If you have an abundance of time and spend less money on everything else, digital entertainment is an obvious sponge, soaking up whatever it can. However, when you have soaring inflation and rising cost of essentials, such as electricity, for example, you need to either divert more of your income to those areas or increase the amount of time you use to earn money. Added on top of this, as you decrease your availability of time, you decrease your exposure to digital entertainment. It's not just a lack of disposable income, it's a lack of opportunity to even engage with those mediums. And for yet another example of global economic factors that are about to eviscerate the gaming market, we can look at Germany. Germany is the fifth largest gaming economy on earth, and yet Germany is in what is best described as an energy crisis, where the cost of energy is soaring, the income required to compensate must be higher, and this will naturally bleed over, for a variety of reasons, into time availability and digital entertainment spending. It's not the only example, but that is yet another top 10 global video game economy experiencing a dampening effect on digital entertainment. My assertion? The incoming video game recession will be far greater than any current prediction has accounted for. But again, why does it matter? Well, for anyone who reads media publications, attends conferences or conventions, participates in gaming forums, and anything else you can think of, it matters because there will be a dramatic downturn in all of it. For a good example of this, something I believe is a canary in the coal mine, if you will, we can look at eSports. Upcomer, a gaming publication that debuted in 2021, has just laid off most of its staff and is trying to pivot into video content. Most people have probably never heard of them, and it's also a result of a changing media landscape. But having started during the all-time high explosive growth period, they are now facing a recession in the industry, and as with any economic downturn, there will be early warning signs. Another one? Inven Global. For this one, their entire editorial staff covering esports is gone. And this is a much more established example of video game related companies beginning to feel pressure as a result of the impending downturn. Yet another example, Dallas Morning News. Yes, they had an esports department. Again, most people have probably never heard of them. But like the rest, they are now closing down. This department was founded in 2020, right during the period of explosive growth. But as soon as the economic tides have shifted, they are one of the first to go down. Again, canary in the coal mine. For those that don't know, that phrase was born when coal miners would bring a caged little canary bird into a coal mine, and if there was a buildup of carbon monoxide or some other dangerous gas, the canary would die first, while the miners could then make it out alive. Now, for some people, what I'm saying right now is just common sense. Young video game players are the most frequent spenders, they often rely on parents' credit cards, and when you tighten the belt of economic growth, it will eventually cut down on entertainment spending, inevitably, from the adults who buy for themselves to the kids who ask their parents. But some people really do not believe that the gaming market can even have a recession. June of this very year, PR Newswire was saying, quote, Video game industry proves once again to be recession-proof. From Forbes in 2020, quote, Is gaming recession-proof record revenue for a $160 billion industry with 2.7 billion players? End quote. This one was quoting Unity Vice President Julie Shoemaker, and there is a lengthy list of publications and developers who believe that video games simply can't have a recession because they are in an industry who benefit from that type of event. 
my position, they could not be more wrong. In fact, for Unity, as of June 2022, a year after the vice president says that they are recession-proof during the greatest boom of all time for the industry, they were laying off hundreds of employees to cut costs. Just a few weeks prior, the CEO was claiming strong financial footing and said that they wouldn't be resorting to layoffs, but here we are, right? Because they are. And it looks like maybe the hubris of thinking that your industry is recession-proof is coming home to roost. Recession will hit the industry hard, but it will hit hardest for smaller studios who can't access investment capital as easily. While major companies will certainly be affected, smaller companies will bear the brunt of it. And as I stated earlier, this recession will be driven on a global scale. One final example, Japan. Analysts are now predicting an economic recession for Japan as well, which is the third largest video game market on Earth, and also home to some of the largest publishers and manufacturers that cater to the entire globe. That's the number one, the number three, the number five, and the number ten video game economies being subjected to strong, downward macroeconomic trends all at once, and that's not even a full list. Gaming is not recession-proof, and to explain just how ridiculous that idea really is, we need to think about how games monetize. Any traditional company with a standard pricing model, let's say Elden Ring for example, will do fine. Why? Because $60 is nothing when compared to the amount of time you can get. What's better? Honestly, what's better? Spending hundreds on a three-day vacation or spending 60 on three weeks of intermittent fun? It could be even more than that. No-brainer. Obviously, you get more value for less money. However, companies with massive tentpole franchises that rely on whales, massive spenders that do so every month, or focus on aggressive monetization of mobile games with high per-user spending from a smaller group of individuals, yeah, they're fucked in a recession. Monetization has been hurtling towards a point of user fatigue already, independent from all this, but combine that with a tightening economy and serious downturn, this industry is just not prepared for what's on the horizon. Bottom line, there is a recession looming in video games that may actually be the first serious economic hardship that the industry has legitimately faced. Off the heels of explosive growth, with a dramatic set of conditions appearing on a global stage, video games are going to have some rocky weather and character building struggles. In the extreme. Not all companies will make it through, but the rest remains to be seen. That's it. If you want to support, there are links down below, Locals and Patreon to support the channel, Odyssey, a YouTube platform alternative, another creator to check out, merch, social media, masterworks, and more. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.